Let's take a look at actually impregnating wood with resin. And uh, first of all, why would you want to do that? Well, it's pretty simple that you may get really beautiful wood, but if it has decayed a little bit, maybe on one side, that kind of thing, but it's got beautiful coloring in it, and you want to use it. So you can impregnate it with resin, and then you can still make pens and bottle stoppers, and <clears throat> you can even do bowls and other things. So there's a lot of opportunity with this to use beautiful pieces that otherwise you wouldn't be able to turn or uh, even do other work, uh, woodworking on, because it would fall apart. So a couple of things just to, to let you see what you can do, the potential with this. We've got these different colored bottle stoppers here because you can use the resin just by itself, but you can also add coloring to the resin and end up with these beautiful colors added to the wood if you want to do that. One little caution about that, if you add color to the resin, you can't take the color back out. So if you make it blue, it's always going to be blue resin. And we'll talk about that in more detail here in a little while. Um, again, what you're going to need is a container. We're going to just use the little one because we're going to do some pen parts here that we'll be impregnating in a few minutes. Uh, so we're going to have the small container. We'll get into that. You need a float plate. All of this stuff, of course, comes with these. The resin is available in either quarts or gallons. Again, depending on the size of what you intend to do would determine the volume of resin that you might need. And the resin can be reused. Uh, again, you're going to need a vacuum source. If you've already got that, great. If not, then you're going to need a vacuum generator that we, uh, we recommend with this because it, it really is the easiest way to do this. And again, we'll get into those details in a moment here. Uh, and if you've got odd-shaped pieces, like a bowl that won't fit in the container, you can use a bag, and we'll go through how to do that and what's involved in using the bag as well to do those odd-shaped, bigger pieces. And, of course, these uh, containers do come in various lengths and diameters. We have the 6-inch and the 8-inch, and they come in lengths 8 inch, 12, 18, and we can custom do longer lengths if you want to do a gun stock or an extra tall pepper mill. We can, you know, accommodate you uh, with custom lengths to do pretty much whatever you might want to do. And so now we're going to get into the particulars of how to actually do some pieces and impregnate them with resin. Okay, we're going to do some pen parts. Uh, impregnating them with the resin and we're using this smaller container it's perfect for pen parts it doesn't take a lot of resin to fill it and cover those and uh, it's just the right size for that so if all you're ever doing is pens it's a perfect one to have so what we've got to do is take our parts that, that I'm going to put in and you can see there's some spalting in these and you know the wood's pretty soft so that's why we want to impregnate it so that it will uh, be able to be turned and, and uh, not fall apart while you're doing that. Now, float plate's going to go in, and this is our cam. So what I'm going to be doing down in there is drop this in and rotate the cam with a screwdriver to lock it against the side of the container so that the wood can't float up when I pour the resin in. So I'm just setting this down in there now, and then I will rotate that cam and that will lock that in and I can pull up on this ring and see that this thing is locked down in there and not going to lift up out of there easily or anything like that. And you'll note that I do have gloves on and I'm actually going to put some safety glasses on for the moment. Pouring this resin, it's really very safe and it's water soluble, it cleans up with water, but if you have a cut or anything, it, it can irritate that, and it even can cause irritation with some people just getting on their skin. So we just want to be cautious about that. So now, how much resin to put in? I want to completely cover the pieces that are in there and then have a little bit above that because as the resin is pushed into the wood, and we'll talk about that process in a moment, but the level of the resin will go down as the wood pulls resin in. So you want to make sure you completely cover it. Don't leave the top out or you might have dry spots on your pieces. And uh, so just pour this in.
And there we are. We have about a half an inch above the level of the wood that's in there. So now I place again our tempered glass lid on there and this tempered glass again 10,000 psi this can withstand and we can with air pressure we can only get 14 psi if we get a perfect vacuum so we've got a real safety factor there so now I have this vacuum generator is hooked up through this hose to the chamber here's an advantage of the generator over a vacuum pump I can just open this valve slightly and it will begin to pull vacuum and now there's air bubbles in there bubbling up if I fully open it all at one time you can get so many bubbles that it causes foam and the foam can come up and you'll actually pull it through your vacuum generator or your vacuum pump if you were using one so you've got to bring the vacuum up slowly you can't just hit it with full vacuum and with this I can control that really easily if you have a vacuum pump you may want to put our accessory in here that you can add that has a gauge and a valve so that you can bleed off some of that vacuum and let the vacuum come up slowly. So that's one of those things that you want to be aware of as you do this. Okay, so I've eased up on the vacuum here in the beginning so that I didn't foam everything up and all that. And so now I can open that vacuum full go. and in this case I'm pulling about 25 26 inches of, of mercury which is really a good vacuum and so now I just have to let this run until I get to the point that there are no more bubbles and what that signifies is that we've pulled all the air out of the wood and getting the air out is what lets this process work so we've got all the air out of there now we're set so our next thing will be what we do with that wood once the air is out. How long that takes depends on how much wood, how decayed it is. There's a lot of factors involved there. So I can't tell you exactly, but it's usually 40 to 45 minutes. And at the end of 40 to 45 minutes, it will have subsided. There'll be no more bubbles and you're ready to go to, to go to the next step. So we now are, are very close to that time. So we bubbles are gone. Obviously, there's been a lapse time here. And I close this. That allows the vacuum to come out. And I can remove the lid. And now what I want to do is get the resin out of there. That's my next thing. So we have to, to shift around. I'm going to take the bottle that I use to, to pour the resin in. And I'm actually going to place it down here and use this drain so I don't have to pick this container up or do anything. I just put that in, open the drain, and we just let the resin drain from the container. Now that'll take a moment or two. While it's doing that, it's draining down, going in. Let's talk about a couple of other things. I mentioned earlier that we can use a bag. So if I've got this odd shaped piece and I want to put resin in it and I can't fit it in my container, we can use the bag. And the bag is really very simple to use. Inside you'll see that there's screen. So whatever you're placing in there, you place it inside the screen. The reason for that is when I pull a vacuum all around this, it would lock that down and not allow the vacuum to actually pull to everything. It'll just collapse the bag. The screen is there to allow air to pass through. That's what that's for. And when you buy the bag, you're going to actually get one of these blue hoses. Now, what's this all about? Well, here's the thing. As the bag collapses and I've filled that bowl full of resin, some of that's going to get pulled out through this port that's in here. Well, if I pull that directly into my vacuum generator, that'll ruin the generator or your vacuum pump. So here's what you do. And again, we're draining resin through this hose right now, but once that's set up, we have this other fitting. We replace this fitting with this one, 
this hose goes here. So now I've got this hose connected to my container. I put the lid back on and turn the vacuum generator on. It uses this chamber for the extra resin to get pulled into the bottom so it doesn't come into your generator. So this is a, a dry port. It's a way to evacuate the bag. Any excess resin is captured in the uh, container here, not into the generator or your vacuum pump if you're running a pump. And it's just a clean, easy way to use this in between. Okay, all the resin has drained out of here, so I can remove the lid now. And while we were draining that, I got the oven, it's preheated. And the critical temperature for the resin, this is real important, the critical temperature is between 195 and 200. This is not a case of more is better. 195 to 200, that's what makes the catalyst react and makes the resin harden. If you're below that, it won't harden as it's supposed to. And if you go above, it actually can make the resin boil in the wood and it pushes it all out instead of it being inside. So we don't want that to happen either. So now I have to loosen my float plate. Got it loose. Grab it out of there and bring it up. And uh, then I'm going to just set it aside here since it's covered in resin now. And that resin's really easy to clean off. I just didn't want to lay it on our table. Uh, I just simply need to, to go to the sink, rinse it in water. It won't hurt the septic or sewer at all, any of that. It's absolutely the MSDS. Is, it won't harm anything. Completely water soluble. So now I take my piece that's impregnated and I'm going to wrap it in foil. And there's only one reason that we wrap this in foil. And that very simply is that as the resin cures, if this is laying on the shelf in the oven or it's touching another piece, it will weld itself to it. The resin will bond them together. So we wrap them in foil just to keep them separate. So now we're ready to place this in the oven. So I've got my pieces pre-wrapped here. We're all set to go. I simply place these in the oven. Again, preheated. We slide this back in. And now, again, the exact time is really hard to tell you because it depends on the thickness of the wood, the density of the wood, but the temperature has to get clear through wood, and wood is a very good insulator. So this takes approximately 45 minutes. What you can do is midway through the process, if you're curious and you want to make sure, you can just unwrap the foil on a piece and look in it real quickly and see if it's still liquid in there and wet or if it has started to solidify. And that's the process. Once that is done, we'll open these up here in a few minutes after it's complete and I'll show you what they look like when they come out of there with the resin all set. Okay. These have been in the oven long enough now. They've cured. We'll pull those out. I'll open one of these up for you so you can get an idea of what this looks like once it has been fully processed and cured in there. Get it to pull loose here. And there we are. You can see there's resin on the surface. It's fully cured. It's hard. And that piece now is ready for you to make your pen blanks out of. So that's the process. If you have a larger piece like a bowl and you want to put it in, there's no need other than to put some foil on here so that any resin that oozes out doesn't drip all over the inside of your oven. It doesn't have to be wrapped in aluminum foil because it's not going to stick to any other pieces in there or anything like that. So that's all the foil is for. It, it doesn't do anything else. So kind of recap here now. Again, you can add color to the resin if you want. We have the pots in many different sizes. We have this accessory. Again, if I have a vacuum pump already and I'm not using our generator, I can pull my vacuum through our regular port, but I can open this valve, which will allow some air to, to uh, escape into there so the vacuum doesn't come up too quickly and cause foam. 
So that's what this accessory helps you with. And many times if you just have a bare pump, you don't even have a vacuum gauge. This is your gauge then so that as you close this down, you know how much vacuum you're pulling. Once you get through the foam and it's just a few bubbles, close it off completely. And again, wait for the bubbles about 40, 45 minutes. It's about 40 to 45 in the oven, but that varies a lot. If I do 60 pen parts, it takes a lot longer in the oven. Simply, you cook a big turkey longer than you do a small turkey, and it's, it just takes longer to get that heat clear through. So that's sort of the process. And, uh, you know, this, this can let you use all that wood that you didn't think was any good anymore, but is just beautiful with all that color. Thank you.